Hey guys, it's Dave. It's been a little while since my last video, but I'm finally recovered from my back-to-back -back colds. First I had COVID, then I had strep throat, uh, recovered from both, and uh, just been busy with work and stuff like that. So sorry that there's been a little bit of a gap, but I am back now for the next video. And today what I wanted to talk about is the big launch for Rocket Lab from their new Wallops launch complex. We've just experienced delay after delay for this launch. It's really frustrating, really unfortunate. I know the team's tried as hard as they can to make the launch a success, and so many things have conspired against them. Uh, really frustrating. I don't blame anyone. Well, maybe NASA a little bit for not getting their software finished quicker. But other than that, I don't really blame anyone for the issues that have happened, but I just just thought it would be interesting to go back and look at the crazy saga that has been the first launch from their new complex, all the issues that have popped up delaying it, and uh, <laughs> everything that's happened to get us here. Now we're finally looking at a launch next year in January. So obviously this is going to be a little bit rough for Q4's numbers. We are expecting to have this launch happen in Q4. Now there'll be one fewer launches. It'll definitely cause a hit to revenue and earnings. Uh, you know, probably about $8 million in revenue will have to be pushed back into January. Of course, they'll still make this money, but it will definitely affect the numbers when it comes to not only Q4, but the full year. So uh, I think in a future video, I'm going to go over the numbers, what we can expect, whether, uh, you know, Q1 of 2023 is now looking better and uh, what we can expect from Q4, or at least make some projections, give some ideas. But that's for a future video. Right now, I just want to talk about this specific launch, how we got here, and uh, <laughs> all the crazy things that have happened along the way. It's really been, it's been wild, like unbelievable, really, when you think about it. Now, if you can believe it, all the way back in October of 2018, Rocket Lab held the groundbreaking ceremony to begin construction on their new launch pad in Wallops, Virginia. Feels like forever ago. But they were able to make quick progress on the pad because they used a lot of the similar designs that they put in place in their New Zealand launch complex, and they were able to finish up construction around December of 2019. Now, funny enough, also in December of 2019, Rocket Lab debuted new autonomous flight termination software of their own for Electron launches from their New Zealand facility. And if you're not too familiar with this FT AFTS system, basically what it does is makes flight termination decisions autonomously by using redundant computers that track the launch vehicle using global positioning system and onboard sensors combined with configurable software-based rules that identify where the rocket can safely fly. If a rocket goes off course, the AFTS will issue a command to terminate the flight by shutting down the engines. Now, Rocket Lab originally planned to launch their first vehicle from the Wallops facility in Q2 of 2020 for the U.S. Department of Defense. However, the U.S. flights were delayed by two years due to NASA requiring their own autonomous flight termination system to be used from the range. Uh, this suffered several delays, including requiring additional time to correct errors and complete testing. The NASA safety software is required for Electron flights from Wallops, with Rocket Lab adapting it into its own systems for launches. This is extremely frustrating if you ask me, especially when Rocket Lab has their own software that has been working fine from New Zealand. Obviously, there's probably differences when you're flying from Wallops, but uh, two years to me is just madness. I mean, the amount of red tape Finally, on November 16th of 2022, Rocket Lab announced that their first launch from the Wallops facility would take place on December 7th. Then on November 30th, the company announced that to allow for more time for preparations, they were targeting December 9th for the launch. So just a delay of two days there. Next on December 7th, just two days before the planned launch, it was announced that due to an incoming weather front bringing strong winds, the launch would be pushed back to December 13th. Next up, on December 11th, the launch date was changed to the 15th due to range and airspace availability issues. If you're enjoying this video and you like watching content on stocks, investing, and space companies, uh, please 
click that subscribe button down below. It'll mean a lot to me and really help out growing the channel. We are getting very close to that 1,000 subscriber number, and I'm very excited to hit that goal. Just two days later, on December 13th, the team announced that they are pushing the launch back yet again due to unfavorable weather conditions, now targeting no earlier than December 16th for the launch. It was also shared that there was an 85% chance of favorable weather conditions on the 16th. So, Electron is out on the pad, ready to go, finally, after all these delays. And what happens next? The NASA and the FAA are not done with their final documentation, so we have to delay yet again. Now announced that they're targeting no earlier than December 18th for the launch. Pretty frustrating. We've been working towards this for two years, and we have just red tape and documentation holding us up from what could be an extremely exciting launch. So the day comes and what happens? Well, of course, you guessed it, uh, high winds up in the upper atmosphere caused them to have to stand down. You can see in this graph, the upper level high winds were just unacceptable with Peter Beck saying that the team pushed as hard as they could, but the polar vortex won today. And then with the next launch window occurring on the 19th, the team announced that due to strong upper level winds forecasted for the 19th, they were standing down from a December 19th launch attempt. They will assess remaining opportunities for launch later this month. Finally, on the 19th, the team tweeted out that Continued strong upper level winds would rule out the final day of their launch window, forcing us to now push back to a January 2023 launch date and to stand by for more information. Extremely disappointing stuff. I just want to say anyone who was tuning in to watch or even went out there to see the launch live you have my deepest sympathies for spending all your time and not getting to see the launch frustrating for everyone involved including rocket lab um really just uh difficult difficult situation hopefully this is not a sign of things to come with lots of weather issues in the wallops area so yeah, just really crazy the number of delays and issues we've run into with this new launch complex. The complex itself was ready to go back in December of 2019, but we've been waiting for software from NASA to get made and certified, and we've been waiting for weather issues, we've been waiting for paperwork and red tape. Uh, really frustrating, and I'm sure no one's more frustrated than Peter and the team, but they will get the launch off the ground next year, I am sure. So, um, between this launch not happening and then, of course, just a rough market we've been having, uh, Rocket Lab stock has dropped down into the 3.7 to 3.8 range, pretty close to all-time lows. I'm curious if any of you have bought out there. I was uh, unfortunately unable to add any more shares right now. I would have loved to at these prices, but I'm not in a really a position to add more, unfortunately. And I've already hit my 10,000 share count, so even if we have this attractive price, um, everyone has to allocate their own portfolio as they see fit. Uh, if it stays this low and I get the opportunity, I may have to buy more. To do that, I'll probably have to sell some other companies. It's a really tough, tough call. But uh, I may have to, if it continues to stay in this level or even drop further, it'll just be too tempting. I did sell a put for the stock, though. If it stays below 3.7, I'll be looking at having to buy more shares because that put will be executed. So uh, in that way, I guess you could say that I that I am adding exposure to the stock. So yeah, let me know down below if you've added any, any more shares, how many more you've added. Uh, always interested to hear how big is is Rocket Lab in your portfolio percentage-wise? That was something we were talking about in the Discord that I found was an interesting discussion. Uh, I'd love to hear, you know, is it 10% of your portfolio, 5% more or less uh, interested in that for sure. Thanks to everyone for watching, especially if you made it to the end of the video. I really appreciate every viewer and I hope you're having a uh, wonderful holidays. I will see you guys next time. Have a great week and bye for now.